The best way to experience the phenomenon described by this simulation is to just grab a bathroom scale and take a ride in a real elevator. Also, smartphones these days typically have an acceleration sensor that will allow you to measure the different accelerations you experience in an elevator. The basic idea here is that to take you from rest on one floor to rest on another floor, the elevator needs to accelerate upward at first, then travel with some constant upward speed, then decelerate, in other words, accelerate downward, to a stop. In order for you to accelerate, the elevator needs to apply a force to you that is not balanced out by gravity. The elevator always applies an upward force on you. The floor of the elevator pushes up, and we call this the normal force. If the elevator pushes upward on you with more force than that needed to balance your weight, you accelerate upward. If instead the elevator pushes upward on you with less force than that needed to balance your weight, you accelerate downward. That means you slow to a stop when moving upward. The graph at left shows the magnitude of the upward normal force applied to you by the elevator. This force is what is measured by the scale in the elevator. The elevator applies three different magnitudes of force over the course of a single journey, one to accelerate you, one to balance gravity and keep you moving at constant speed, and one to decelerate you. The graph at right shows your velocity as a function of time. When accelerating upward, the graph has an upward slope. The value of this slope is the magnitude of the acceleration. In this case, this would equal the magnitude of the net force acting on the rider divided by the mass of the rider. This is known as Newton's second law. When moving at constant speed, the slope is flat. This means that the upward and downward forces are equal. No unbalanced force is acting, so the speed remains constant. This is a way of expressing Newton's first law. When decelerating, the slope is negative. This means that the upward normal force is less than the downward gravitational force, and the rider is slowing down. The amount of slope, the acceleration, would again be calculated by Newton's second law. It would be negative, which is why we've been calling it a deceleration. You can change the acceleration of the system with a slider, or you can change the mass of the rider, and you can press on the elevator buttons to get the simulation to actually move. Play around with the acceleration and mass and see what happens.